You've seen us working on the 34 Ford Street Beast Coupe. You've seen everything that we've done. Now it's time to get it running. So the owner has installed his own motor and transmission. And what we got here, we got a 350, okay, with a 700 R4 overdrive transmission. Now that's the basic common drivetrain that most people use in them is the overdrive transmission okay that's the uh, the most popular transmission that you can use now that transmission has a manual lockup inside it they took the electronic shift out so it manually locks up that's the best way to do it if you go to the training shop you tell them you have a 700 R4 and what they'll do is they'll install the manual lockup kit in it and it'll do away with all the electronics and it'll uh, shift into overdrive automatically so what we got to do is for overheating. So instead of running the transmission lines like the owner was going to do right here to the radiator, what we're going to do is we're going to install a separate transmission cooler. Now the ones that I use, and these are the best ones you can buy, okay, it's the aluminum cylinder finned, okay, dual pass transmission cooler. On the coupe here with the 350 engine, this is more than equivalent for that transmission cooler to cool the transmission down okay and where we install that is down on the frame rail there what you're going to need to install this transmission cooler you're going to need two adapters that's eighth inch nipple to 5 16th okay those screw right in the end just like that as you can see and always use always use your thread sealant before you put these on we don't want any leaks so you go ahead and install. So if you get your fittings in there. Now on the line itself, we're using a 5 16 uh, hydraulic line. And that's going to be a flexible line, so we'll be able to run it around the frame and where we need to go. And the fittings that you get, you can get this at Napa Auto Parts. Okay, They do all this right there. And we're going to have two 45 fittings, and we're going to have two straights. Now. Is that just from previous uh, builds to know the proper bend? On right. It? I've done this for a long time, so this is the way I do it to all street beast cars. I've never had a problem. It actually drops the temperature of your radiator down uh, by 10 to 15 degrees. Wow. Just using this cooler. Okay, you can use any transmission cooler you want. This is what I use. This is what I recommend. Okay. So, as you can see, just to visualize... This is a flared fitting, just like your brakes, so it'll be an airtight fitting, okay? And you have to buy the adapter fittings to make this work. Now, this is also the size fitting, which is 5 16 flare that fits inside the tra all General Motors transmissions. And the 45s will come down off the transmission. So what you want to do is get your transmission cooler installed, which I'm going to show you how to do here in a second. And then run your lines once you get the line put on the, once you get the line pressed in and that presses in very hard so make sure it goes all the way up to the end you want to tape that on there so it doesn't come off because you'll have to take this back to the auto parts store or you know the pipe fitting or wherever you bought your parts to have them crimp that back together so if you come down here I'm going to show you where we install the transmission cooler on our car because we want a nice close fit see and what I do is I put them if you look right here okay in between the frame rails here underneath the floor you'll see there's a nice ample space on the frame so I mount that transmission cooler on the outside of the frame just like that as far back as I can get it. That way I'm going to have enough clearance to either run my lines up through here and come back around or I can go down through the bottom and around. So we'll mount the cooler here and then as you look up inside here you'll see where the transmission lines the owner put on here. We will be taking those okay. off. I was telling you to use thread sealant. I use the uh, liquid style you can also buy that in a roll okay pipe thread tape and what you want to do is make sure you get it on there but do not get any on the opening hole because it's still going to be a while before tranny fluid flows through there we don't want this to clog up our tranny 
we get that on there just like that. And what that's going to do, that's going to give us a nice seal on our fittings. Do we need to worry about an inlet or an outlet on the training cooler? No. You can put them on either or. It doesn't matter. It's just a passing. It's just a dual pass, which is better than a single pass. A dual pass has fittings on both ends. A single pass cooler would have one fitting here and one there. So this is actually doing double of what a single pass cooler does. That's why the size is just right for your Street Beast car. Now, if you are using a big block in your car, you need to go to a bigger cooler because that big block engine is going to run hotter. Okay, so what we do is we go ahead and get those nice and snug on there. And we'll go ahead, once we mount it, we'll go ahead and tighten that up a little bit more to make sure that they're tight. Then what you want to do is you want to get four self-tapping screws, okay? These are 3 a's head, okay? They're self-tapping. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw that to the frame. That's more than enough to hold that to the frame, believe me. You do not have to drill that out and put nuts and bolts in it for a transmission. Mark all our lines up, and we'll take it over to, we'll take the uh, training lines off, take them over and get them crimped, bring them back, and hook it all up. 